some way Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. Some way Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours, if it is me, it's ours. I think that's something, uh, and I see you know, reflections of that. Uh, again, in terms of, you know, there is a linkage today which is being made. You know, a linkage between China and India and what's happening in Ukraine. So come on, guys. I mean, China and India happened way before anything happened in Ukraine. So the Chinese don't need a precedent somewhere else in the world on how to, you know, engage us or not engage us or be difficult with us or not be difficult with us. So I, I, as I said, I mean, I just see this as frankly a not very clever argument, a very self-serving one. Uh, and uh, uh, this idea that, you know, your grand strategy must be about how you will choose. I will do what, as all of us do, I will weigh the, the situation, you know, like uh, everybody, after all, what do, uh, how do countries eventually make decisions? Dr. Jashankar, um, with um, the Indian government essentially ignoring uh, war crimes in Ukraine, not condemning Russia, mm, not doing sanctions, um, Question. you then expect, I'm totally sorry, I know what I do, uh, with, uh, the, uh, with India counting on a global support for, uh, in its struggle with China, its issues with China. Um, how do you think you'll be trusted by others after that? Why do you think anyone will help Delhi after you didn't help others over Ukraine? Thank you. You know, it's an interesting question which you might, I mean, not you meaning you personally, uh, but uh, people might want to ask themselves because if I were to take Europe collectively, which has been singularly silent on many things which were happening, for example, in Asia, you could ask why would anybody in Asia trust Europe on anything at all. Uh, so here's the take. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, first of all, I think you're mischaracterizing our position uh, where, we've, where they have, for example, when Bucha happened, we condemned Bucha and we actually asked for an investigation uh, into Bucha. Uh, in terms of what is happening with the Ukraine conflict, our position is very clearly that we favor uh, uh, an immediate cessation of hostilities. It's not that we've ignored it, unless you call phone calls to Putin and Zelensky as ignoring something. Uh, so first I would urge you to get the factual position accurately. Uh, secondly, in terms of the connection you are making, look, uh, you know, we, we have a difficult relationship with China. We're perfectly capable of managing it. It's, uh, if, if uh, I get global uh, understanding and support, obviously it is of help to me. But this idea that I 
do a transaction, that I come in in one conflict because it will help me in conflict too. That's not how the world works. Uh, so a lot of our problems in China have nothing to do with Ukraine, have nothing to do with Russia. They predate it. And there are, I mean, if we are getting into who is silent on what issue at what point of time, I could point to a whole lot of issues on which, as I said, uh, I mean, Europe has uh, sort of uh, uh, held its peace. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a great uh, polemical point you made. So I take it in that spirit. <laughs>